We are all familiar with the slide to unlock effect from our lock screen and sometimes it's used in apps as opposed to a button for confirmational purposes. This is obviously more interactive than a button and can be a fun replacement for it in your game. Let's see how we can make this. We have our UI setup. So background is an image and in front of it is a blurred out version of the same image. For the slider we have two images, a rectangle in the background and a circle in the foreground. Circle is anchored to the center of our rectangle and our rectangle is anchored at the center of our background. This is important because using this, we can hard code the boundaries of our slider. Our first task is to make our front or knob of the slider move when we drag on it. Let's start by creating a script. We inherit idrag handler and implement the member function on drag. In this, we first save our local position in a vector3 variable and then change it based on change in the position of the drag. We change just the x value since that is the only line of motion we want and keep y and z constant. Let's test it out. Now we want to confine our knob inside the slider background. Since we have a middle anchor and not a stretch anchor, we can hard code it. If it were a stretch anchor, we would have to subtract the end distances from our screen size. We already have a video explaining how anchors work, so you can check that out as well. Card should be on the top right. Here, we are going to use clamp function to restrict our value between two values, which we get by checking the distance of the knob from the center when it's at any extreme position. Let's test it. Now our knob movement is confined. Next, we want to check if the slide is complete. And if not, we want to move the knob back to its initial position. For this, we inherit iNDRAG handler and implement member function on NDRAG. In this, we store the local position in a variable and then check if it's greater than least value and less than max, we revert it back to the initial position and then use return to terminate further execution. Let's test this. This works and our knob is being reverted unless it has moved all the way. Next, we want to be able to call other functions based on the slider completion. For this, we are going to emit an event action and subscribe our functions to it. We are keeping it static since we don't want multiple instances of it, but if you do, you can remove the static keyword and in other scripts, store particular instance of it. When the slide is done, we can emit this. We also need to check if any function has subscribed to this event or not. You can use if statement for this or null propagation. Now we are going to create another script where we create a function to fade out the blurred background to reveal our actual background. We start by defining our public variables for the blurred image as well as the slider. Then we define our function where we destroy our slider and apply crossfade alpha effect on our blurred image. In start method, we now subscribe this function to event action and we are done. Let's see how this looks. That was all for this video but there is more for you to watch. Check out our playlist here for Unity UI tutorials and check out this video that YouTube recommends for you. And we'll see you next time.